Hi, I'm Dr. Lily, and this is my pocket pediatrician. I was talking to my son the other day, and he said, Mommy, I just don't like my pocket pediatrician. I wasn't really shocked because six-year-olds aren't really my target audience, but I asked him why just to see what he said, and he said, you just don't have enough superheroes in there. You need more superheroes and bad guys and stuff to make it interesting. So I think if I were going to create a superhero today, the one I would create would be Epinephrine Man and his partner, Adrenaline Girl. And they understand how to use all epinephrine auto injectors. So if somebody's life was in danger because they were having anaphylaxis or a serious life-threatening allergic reaction, these two would know exactly how to use every epinephrine injector out there and be able to save lives easily and quickly. And so what I want to do today is train you guys how to be everyday heroes who can also use these epinephrine auto injectors. And the reason I want to train you is because there are over 6 million children living in the United States with food allergies and over 40% of them have already had anaphylactic reactions. That means about 2.4 million children living in the United States have required epinephrine or the hormone adrenaline in order to save their life from a life-threatening allergy. On average, there are two children with food allergies in every single classroom in the United States. That means you're gonna come across somebody who has food allergies for sure, and the time may come when they encounter their allergen and you need to be the one to help save their life. So what we're gonna to do today is cover the different types of epinephrine auto injectors, how to use them safely at home, and at the end, I'm gonna have a few tips and tricks for you in terms of what to do with a wiggling, squirming, screaming child and how to safely get the medication delivered to them as well. Stay tuned so that you too can become an everyday superhero, whether it's for your child or a stranger you happen to meet one day. When the doctor says my child has a condition, I'll learn more at my pocket pediatrician. Hi, I'm Dr. Lily, and today we're going to talk about epinephrine auto injectors. There are three main types of epinephrine auto injectors on the market, and basically, they all contain epinephrine. So, in the hospital setting, when we use epinephrine, it comes in a tiny little vial, and we use a needle and a syringe, and we draw it up, and then we put it in the patient. But that's hard to do at home, and so they developed epinephrine auto injectors so that people could get the medicine to a person who's experiencing anaphylaxis or a life threatening allergic reaction quickly. The reason for that is because anaphylaxis is dangerous, it's completely life threatening. When you have anaphylaxis symptoms like hives with tongue swelling, lip swelling, throat tightening, wheezing, difficulty breathing, vomiting, or a drop in blood pressure, that means that you need epinephrine now. Epinephrine is adrenaline, which is the stress hormone that gives you the kind of fight or flight reaction, but it also reduces all the inflammation that's caused by anaphylaxis. If you're having an anaphylactic reaction, nothing is gonna save you except for epinephrine. That's the most important drug that you need, and the faster it's delivered, the more likely you're gonna survive. Using epinephrine immediately has been proven over and over that it saves lives. When you call 911, you have to wait for the ambulance to get there and for the paramedics to be able to deliver epinephrine. So having it at home if you have a history of anaphylaxis or life-threatening allergies is paramount to saving lives. So there are three types of epinephrine auto injectors. The first one we're gonna talk about is the EpiPen. It comes in a two pack and basically this two pack should stay together because it's nice to have two doses. Sometimes you need more than one dose to stop the reaction. Sometimes you mess up. Sometimes you might accidentally inject the medicine before you put it in your thigh. And so you wanna have two doses so you get two chances. When you look at your EpiPen, this is a real one, and you can look right here at the medicine, and I can tell that this one actually looks kind of cloudy. This one's expired. I got it from my neighbor whose daughter has had a history of anaphylaxis, and she gave it to me because this one's old and she doesn't need it anymore. You can tell the medicine's a little bit cloudy. It should look clear like water. So this is probably no good. Epinephrine is very heat sensitive, light sensitive, and cold sensitive. You cannot take an epinephrine auto injector and leave it in your car, uh, in winter or summer because the heat and the cold will mess it up. You want to keep it kind of at room temperature all the time. So if you have a purse, a diaper bag, wherever you're able to keep it in your book bag, if your kid's going to school, they should keep the epinephrine at room temperature at all times. The other thing you want to do is check the expiration date. So right here in the black, this says that this expired in August 2017. When you get your epinephrine auto injector from the pharmacy, you want to look at the expiration date and determine if you have a year on it. It should be good for a year from the time you get it. So if they give you one that expires in a few months, ask for a different one because you want one that's gonna last you a whole year. So since this is the real one, now in EpiPens, the real one is green, the trainer is blue, and with all of these epinephrine auto injectors, they should each come with a trainer. The trainer is what you wanna practice with. 
and it will help you. So in this case, this is a trainer. When I take this out, what I wanna do is the first thing I wanna do is grab it in my dominant hand and I hold it like this. I don't want my thumb on the top or the bottom because a lot of times people can get confused in, an, in a situation if they haven't used it before, they feel nervous, they're anxious, they're having trouble breathing, bop, and they go right into their thumb and inject the epinephrine into their thumb where it's gonna cause their blood vessels to vasoconstrict and clamp down. Uh, it can be a problem if you get it in your thumb and you wanna make sure you have the medicine to deliver in your thigh where it's gonna actually get to your bloodstream and do the good that it needs to do. So whatever type of auto injector you're using, you wanna be able to grip it firmly in your hands, nothing touching either end. Now this is not gonna do anything because I have the blue safety cap on it. Once I remove the cap, the pen is now able to be injected. Now what I wanna do, if my child is having an allergic reaction, I wanna go right in her middle of her thigh on the outside. So about halfway between the knee and the hip and go in the outer thigh muscle. I'm holding it like this and I just push until I hear that click. And now I can count one, two, three. The medicine should be delivered. I can hold on a little bit longer and just make sure it continues to deliver all the medicine if I want. And then what I wanna do is remove it from her thigh, taking it straight out, okay? A lot of times we do see lacerations from these because it is a needle. It's a fairly long needle. It's designed to go through clothes. All of the auto injectors are designed to be used through clothing so you don't have to pull down their pants. You don't have to worry about it going through jeans or denim or anything like that. It can get through everything. Um, but when you pull it out, sometimes people tend to go and do a sweeping motion out and it's a needle so it can cut right through the skin. So sometimes we see people who have little lacerations from the epinephrine injection because as they came out, they did a sweeping motion. So so when you go in, you don't have to do any big stabbing motion. You just go right, plant it firmly on the outer thigh, wait for the click and then remove it straight out. Now on the EpiPens, the needle winds up being covered because when you pull it out, this slides over it and protects it. If you have a trainer, you can use it multiple times and I recommend that you do. Take it out at least once a month, practice it, have your child practice it, and that way they're used to it. You don't have to worry about unfamiliarity if you do have to actually use it. Now this one is the AviQ. The AviQ is manufactured by Kaleo. And it's pretty cool because a lot of people call it the talking epinephrine auto injector. So this is a trainer. When you remove it from the case. This trainer contains no needle or drug and is for training purposes only. Do not use this trainer during an allergic emergency. If you are ready to use, pull red safety guard down and off of this trainer. Place black end against outer thigh, then push firmly until you hear a click and hiss sound, and hold in place for two seconds. Two, one, training complete. Same thing, I'm gonna just pull it straight this out. This trainer may be reused for training purposes. Replace the red safety guard and gray outer case. Reused for training. So this was designed to help people who might be scared, they don't know how to do this, they feel a little nervous, it kind of talks you through it, which is pretty cool. These are becoming more and more common, a lot of families are using them, and it's kind of great that it talks you through it, and the needle also auto retracts into it. Now, this one is generic epinephrine, so that's the name of it, and it comes in this case, so you want to remove it, it comes up in two pieces, and then you have two caps, one on each end. So. This is our safety side. This is our needle side. The needle side is red. Same idea, but this one you wanna hold in for 10 seconds when you put it in. So same place, go right in the outer thigh, push it till you feel the click, count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Same idea, remove it. This one you have to watch out for the needle. So that's why you've got this cap here. So make sure you recap it so that you're protecting yourself from the needle. You can put all the caps back on. And restore it in your case. A lot of people have more than one type of auto injector. Sometimes you get coupons for one 
or there's a discount online. So a lot of families will have more than one since you need to have them in different locations. So make sure you're familiar with all of them. Make sure you know which one you're using. There is also an EpiPen generic, which is exactly like this. It just says generic on it. And it works in the exact same way that the EpiPen does. But this is just kind of our little summary of how you deal with epinephrine auto injectors. So we have our EpiPen, the trainer for the EpiPen. We have the talking AviQ, and we have generic epinephrine. All of them work. They're all the same medicine. It's just a matter of how you deliver it. I also am gonna show you how to hold down a uncooperative child if you're by yourself and you need to give the epinephrine and make sure that you have it in good control. So we're gonna work on that next. So a lot of times when your child's having an allergic reaction, they're not gonna say, oh mommy, go ahead and give me a needle in my thigh. They're gonna be kicking, screaming, crying, having a very difficult time because they're terrified, they feel like they're gonna die, and you're about to stick a giant needle in their leg. So I have another child who is gonna be my uncooperative child and I'm gonna give you a couple tips and tricks for making sure that you get the dose delivered correctly. Before I bring him in here, I wanna give you a couple of principles. One, you wanna be able to have control of the situation. If you're by yourself, that's what I'm gonna show you because it very often happens that there's only one adult with a child when this happens. So you wanna control him above and below the injection site. Make sure you have control above and below. I'm gonna show you kind of a holding technique where I use my elbow as a holder and I use my other hand to hold all of him and then I get the injection right in the middle. I'm able to control the needle. I'm able to make sure that I get the dose delivered. So I will grab him and we'll start that now. I can't kick. You're holding me. Okay. So I have somebody who does not want to kick or scream, which is amazing to me right now. But if he were kicking and screaming, what I would do, grab him like this with this arm. Even if he's kicking, I've got his legs under control here. Grab the cap and go right here, right in the outer thigh. And I've got it. Firmly until you hear a click and hiss sound you and hold in place for two yep. seconds. <laughs> place black end against okay. outer thigh. So and push firmly until you hear a click. If he's fighting me, sound. the other thing I do that helps is I tuck this arm seconds. under my armpit as I reach around and grab. I've got his black end leg outer here under control. And push firmly and until push you here. Click. click two one. Training complete. He fought me a lot harder about putting on these clothes, but if your kids are fighting, this is kind of the right way to hold them. Okay, it looks like you're having hives and trouble breathing. We need to use our epinephrine auto injector. I need you to start kicking, screaming, and fighting. Okay. So, again, arm under here, another arm here, and I've got access to his thigh here. I'm gonna use my elbow to keep kicking. Keep kicking. Got the thing off. I'm ready to go. I have it firmly in my hand. And we're gonna go right in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, remove it straight out. And that's it. With this one again, you gotta make sure you control the needle afterwards. So you wanna recap it so you don't accidentally poke anybody. Get the lid back on. And that's it. So if you're having trouble with the injection, you wanna just make sure. Good control above and below. And you've got your arm, I use my elbow really strong here before I get into the thigh. So I hope this video has been helpful. I hope you feel a lot more comfortable being able to use either an EpiPen, an AviQ, or one of the generic epinephrine pens. I hope you can recognize some of the signs and symptoms of a life-threatening allergic reaction. And while I hope you never need to use these skills, I'm glad that you have them now so that you can feel a little more comfortable taking care of children with food allergies. Remember, you give the epinephrine, then call 911. If you give an epinephrine injection at home, you must go to the emergency department. The patient must get continued monitoring and other treatments, and it's possible that they're gonna need multiple doses of epinephrine. While epinephrine is a life-saving drug, time is of the essence in this case. The faster you give it, the better, and if you need a repeat dose, you can wait five minutes and give a repeat dose. Check out my video on food allergy for more information about food allergies, what causes them, the treatments, and all kinds of stuff like that. And then if you're also interested on the impact that food allergies have on people's lives, I also have a video dedicated to the moms of children with food allergies who kind of explain what life is like from several different lenses. Please feel free to comment below. You know, I have never actually had to use a epinephrine auto injector in real life. I'm generally in a hospital setting where I have a nurse who's going to give the medication for me using a traditional syringe and needle. But 
I would love to know what your experiences have been out in the real world. I know there's a lot of controversy about the cost of these auto injectors. If you have any resources that families can use, like coupons or websites with discounts, definitely list those in the comments below. And feel free to like, comment, and share the video. Also, don't forget to hit that little red subscribe button. The more people who see this, the more people who will be comfortable using the epinephrine auto injectors, and the greater chance that kids with food allergies will have somebody there to help them when they need it. This is Dr. Lilly with my pocket pediatrician. Thanks for stopping by. When the doctor says my child has a condition, I'll learn more at my pocket pediatrician.